Good evening. Happy Tuesday. So I got the uh, answers and counterclaims of Abrams and Peter. And I'm just going to go through the counterclaims because the, uh, the denials and affirmative defenses aren't very interesting. You won't get anything out of them. This is Abrams' counterclaim. He alleges that uh, Abrams is an individual residing in Stoneham, Massachusetts. DeCastro is an individual who resides in Santa Monica, California. The court has jurisdiction pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1332, diversity of jurisdiction. The amount of controversy exceeds $75,000. The court also has supplemental jurisdiction over these claims pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1367. Uh this might be written in this way to uh, just state how the court has the supplemental jurisdiction, or it might be establishing its own jurisdiction based on diversity of, jur diversity of citizenship and alleging that the amount of uh, monetary harm done to Abrams exceeds $75,000, which is questionable. Venue in this court is proper pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1391. DeCastro has made several defamatory statements about Abrams. This includes statement, statements accusing Abrams of being a rapist, an attempted rapist, accusing Abrams of going to prison for raping his girlfriend and beating up his father. A representative, non-exclusive sampling of these statements include the following, and there are four YouTube videos linked. DeCastro's made other statements on various other websites. Oh, and the reason why these are included here is because if there is a motion for um, summary judgment, you, this gets these videos in there because they're in the pleading. DeCastro's made other statements on various other websites, chats, and webcasts, including those statements made through his YouTube channels, Delete Laws, and his backup channel called Chili's Backup. However, the Chili's Backup channel was inexplicably deleted approximately one hour after the court held a hearing in this case on Monday, October 24, 2022, where the court ordered all parties to preserve all materials. These statements were all false. DeCastro made these statements with knowledge of its falsity, or he had reckless disregard to its truth or falsity. So this is the actual malice standard. Oh, here we go. Yep, the actual malice standard. So... Josh is conceding that he's a public figure, and I think that's correct. He is a public figure, at least as far as uh, as far as this community goes, and these statements that uh, that Chile was making. These statements were designed to hold Abrams up to scorn, hatred, ridicule, or contempt in the minds of considerable and respectable segments of the community. De Castro intended on causing financial harm to Abrams and has done so by way of reduced membership and viewership of his YouTube channels, all of which is attributable to De Castro's statements. This decline has caused a reduction in financial compensation for the work performed. Account 1, defamation. Abrams reasserts the preceding paragraphs. De Castro has published several false and defamatory statements about Abrams, including those statements identified above. These statements were false, and De Castro knew of its falsity, or had reckless disregard of its truth or falsity. De Castro made these statements with actual malice. Abrams suffered from financial harm, including lost revenues, as well as emotional distress and anguish as a result of these defamatory statements. Wherefore, Abrams requests the Honorable Court enter judgment in favor on his counterclaim, award actual damages such as punitive and such punitive or multiple damages as allowed by law, award attorney's fees, litigation expenses and costs, and grant such further relief that this court deems just and proper. So pretty basic. Uh, federal, federal pleadings are always a bit weird to me because California is a fact pleading state and federal, re federal courts require notice pleading It's still nighttime, so I could drink whiskey. The difference between fact pleading and notice pleading is fact pleading, you actually have to state all the facts underlying each thing. You can't just state conclusions. You can't state uh, overarching concepts. Like you can't, you can't just say uh, that, well, you can, but it's not really good practice to say, oh, so-and-so made these statements with the actual mouse. You have to state all the basic things the facts that would lead someone. 
he he knew that it was false because he'd pulled up the the uh, background check and so he knew it was false or he should have known it was false because he had pulled up the background check and if he had read the background check he would have seen that the that these allegations weren't reflected in the background check that's those are facts right uh, federal courts require notice pleading basically just whatever puts the other side on notice of generally speaking what the lawsuit's going to be about so that's always a bit jarring for me so uh, I don't want to be too critical uh, but it's, it's pretty basic uh, you don't have to really worry about well I guess theoretically it could be a default judgment so I always find it's best practice to put a dollar amount I find for me it's best practice to put in a dollar amount in as to what your damages are so remember chili put in dollar amounts and those dollar amounts don't mean that you'll get that if the other side defaults because chili could default he could never find he could uh, never end up filing an answer to this uh, counterclaim so if that happens the his maximum uh, exposure is however much they pled the actual dollar amount that they pled in the counterclaim. So a, you know, if they're lucky, a court will consider this number right here as the uh, amount pled. And that would expose, that would theoretically expose Chile to a maximum liability of $75,000. Uh, but it's best to make sure it's, it's, clear word actual damages uh, of no less than $25,000 according to proof award punitive damages of $250,000 or more according to proof something along those lines just to get a number in there but I'm, I'm nitpicking because he's a good attorney and he he did a fine job all right, and then this is uh, Kate Peter's counterclaims. She's demanded a jury trial. That's always a that's always a bit of a that's always a bit of a questionable thing. It's sometimes a jury is better for you. Sometimes a judge is better for you. I I think it, I think the judge would have been just fine on this one. Um, but on the juries can get swayed by a lot of things. So I'm I'm kind of. I'm not a big fan of juries. I, I don't much like juries. They're, they're, to me, less predictable. But maybe I'm just not good at vordering juries. I mean, I, I've only done it once, so <laughs> I didn't enjoy the process. I much prefer just being able to walk in and know who the judge is and, and make the arguments. Uh, yes, most of, most of my cases have settled. Uh, a much lesser number have gone to trial and only one so far has gone to a jury trial so yeah uh, jury trials are not super common 90 90 some odd percent of cases settle anyway so these are the uh, counterclaims just spoiler alert if you are done watching it's just defamation again but we'll go through it Pursuant to Rule 13 of the Federal Rules of Procedure, Kate Peter, Ms. Peter, hereby asserts counterclaims against Jose Maria de Castro, Mr. de Castro, for defamation. In a transparent attempt to seek to harm, intimidate, and diminish Ms. Peter, Mr. de Castro has repeatedly lied to his nearly 50,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel and to anyone else who happens to view his YouTube videos that Ms. Peter sold her daughter for sex and went so far as to crassly lie that Miss Peter pimped out her own kid and the D and the Division of Family Services took her children away. He has further misrepresented that Miss Peter was arrested this year for, shop, for, for siphoning gas out of a car. These false accusations of crimes are patent defamation. I don't know what patent defamation is. Is that like where you have a, uh, a patent claim in patent court? Someone's infringing on your patent. Whiskey. 
I don't I don't like that. These false accusations of crimes are defamation per se, perhaps. Maybe that's what I don't I don't like patent there, but that's just me. I'm nitpicky. Worse, Mr. DeCastro lies about Ms. Peter's daughter. Ta Worse, Mr. DeCastro lies about Ms. Peter's daughter. Take aim at the most. Mr. DeCastro's lies about Ms. Peter's daughter. Take aim at the most sensitive and important aspect of Ms. Peter's life: her children. Ms. Peter is a full-time pro residential property manager and has been for six years. She is also the full-time caregiver and sole provider for her two children, ages 16 and 13. In her spare time, Ms. Peter runs a YouTube channel presently called Bracketed Out Mass Hole, Troll Mafia Official, the channel, which focuses on fringe internet subcultures and prominent figures within them. The channel has 26,500 subscribers and a lifetime view count of 2 million video views. The channel also has an average unique visitor count of approximately 40,000 per month. The channel's focus first and foremost, this writing, I'm not terribly impressed, Mr. Wish. I mean, this is fine so far. I, I'm just nitpicking the writing. If it makes me stumble over it a little bit, that I'm not, I'm not a fan over it. It should flow. You don't want the, you don't want, I mean, the judge really doesn't care. The judge, is, the only time the judge is really going to look at these is to say, well, did they actually, you know, is it a sufficient complaint to state a cause of action, et cetera. So, eh, but, but, I don't know. I'm just being nitpicky. My apologies. My apologies, Kate. You have a fine attorney. Don't let me dissuade you. Uh, the channel's focus first and foremost has been so-called First Amendment auditors, who film themselves agitating police, government employees, postal employees, and sometimes private business owners purportedly to audit their respect for and understanding of First Amendment rights and protections. Second, the channel profiles white nationalists, GoFundMe scammers, sovereign citizens, flat earthers, and other notable internet personalities. I want to say that I have not been uh, featured, so I, I should be because I should be a notable internet personality. I'm joking. I'm, I'm not, but whatever. It was fun to make a joke. Ms. Peters built up a modest but fiercely loyal, a modest but fiercely loyal fan base for the channel and maintained re a reputation for meticulous research, accurate information, and accurate reporting. She left off tickle bitties in there. I don't know why. In or around April 2022, Ms. Peter first became aware of a YouTube personality, previously a TikTok personality, posting under the username Delete Laws. Ms. Peter was able to quickly identify Delete Laws as Mr. DeCastro. His channel is primarily anti-police and anti-government. At the time Ms. Peter discovered Mr. DeCastro, his subscriber count was around 42,000. As of the undersigned date, his channel has 48,000 subscribers. Ms. Peter recognized that Mr. DeCastro appeared to seek to use delete laws to advertise legal services, despite the fact that he holds no college degree, has no legal education, and is not a licensed attorney admitted to the bar of any state. Ms. Peter has also learned that Mr. DeCastro in the past has held, quote, lectures, end quote, in which he purports to be a, quote, 20-year constitutional law scholar, end quote. In these lectures, as well as at other times, Ms. Peter has learned that Mr. DeCastro appears to be soliciting financial support from his clients and network. Ms. Peter published videos about Mr. DeCastro on her channel, including detailing his problematic advertising of legal services. I don't like it. Ms. Peter published videos about Mr. DeCastro on her channel criticizing his advertising of legal services. Criticizing his uh, soliciting funds for legal services. I don't know, problematic is just weird in there. Again, I'm nitpicking. I'm nitpicking. Don't, don't hate me, bro. I'm just nitpicking. In response, Mr. DeCastro has leveraged his platform on YouTube to spread defamatory lies and misinformation about Ms. Peter. Just remember, I nitpicked uh, Chili's, so, you know, it's fair play. I should, I should be 
even-handed about this. If I'm going to nitpick Chili, I'm going to nitpick Wish. And, you know, Chili has an excuse. He's a moron. Wish is an excellent attorney by everything I've read. So, you know, I'm going to hold him to a higher standard. Mr. DeCastro is a public figure. He has an IMDb page and is featured in numerous news articles. He has also been featured in several interviews and promotional videos and has had small roles in national television series. Which ones? He regularly posts videos on his YouTube channel, which again has nearly 50,000 subscribers. It was 48,000 and now we're saying it's near 50. I, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. If you have an accurate number, give an accurate number. If if he's in national television series, state the television series. If he has an IMDb page, you should link the IMDb page. Uh, numerous news articles. That's that that's meaningless. She might as well have just said, or wish might as well have just said that DeCastro is a public figure. Put a period on the end of it and walked away. All of this stuff, all of this stuff looks like it's new and exciting facts, but it's not. It's not. It looks like it. You're going to say, what do you mean? It's a fact that he was featured in several interviews and promotional videos, but it's not because you don't know how many. You don't know what kind of interviews. You don't know how many promotional videos. You don't know what kind of promotional videos. You don't know if they were aired. You don't know anything about these things. It sounds like it's a fact, but it's not a fact. Mr. DeCastro has repeatedly and falsely claimed on his YouTube channel that Miss Peter pimped out her daughter, stating, among other things, did you know that about her name's Kate, Kate Peters, she, uh, God, he's so hard to read. Oh, it's hard to listen to him, but it's even harder to read him. Oh, the man is crazy hard to understand. He, I understand every word he says, but he just makes it so difficult to understand him. Her name's Kate, Kate Peters. She, uh, she pimped out her own kid and the D, the Division of Family Services, took her children away. Wow, dude, you're making videos just trash, just talking trash about me. Wow, it's just like, whoa, whoa, you know? So it's like, wow, just incredible. You pimped out your daughter? So that's why I want to get mass hole on a face-to-face -to, -face to find out, did you actually pimp out your daughter? Why do you lose three of the four children you now you have now? I know the Division of Family Services is a terrorist organization that steals people's kids. I know that I know that I understand that. But yeah, I don't know Kate Peters. Is her name Kate Peters? Uh, B, her children were taken by DFYS, Division of Family Youth Services, because she pimped out her daughter. She sold her daughter for sex. C, and I, I'm, I'm suing this chick, Kate Peter. She defamed me and she harmed me. She, she harmed me. She harmed so many people. She harmed her children, her children. She sold her daughter to sex for men and the state came in. They took her children. 13. Mr. DeCastro falsely claimed that Miss Peter was arrested and later hospitalized for siphoning and stealing gas. A. Yeah, yeah, um, and you guys, just so you, that, uh, that woman who made a video about me, did you know that she was arrested this year for siphoning gas out of a car? B. And then let's talk about the mass hole report. That woman has lost three of four of her children. She's been arrested in the past year for siphoning gas out of a car. She swallowed the gas and had to go to the hospital. No arrest, no such arrest ever occurred. Count one defamation. She repeats and realleges the above allegations. Uh, Mr. DeCastro knowingly and intentionally defamed Miss Peter by publishing false statements of and concerning her to third parties in an effort to ruin her reputation and marginalize her in the community. Mr. DeCastro publishes defamatory statements about Miss Peter with malice and with actual malice as well as with malice and with actual malice. So the standard is actual malice. Him, th his motivation for doing it doesn't matter. It's the actual malice. It's the publishing it with either knowing it's false or with reckless re disregard as to the truth or falsity of it. That's what actual malice is. Having malice is unimportant. Having actual malice, i.e. knowing it's false 
or being reckless as to whether or not it's false and publishing it anyway, that's actual malice. As well as negligently and or with a knowing and reckless disregard for the truth. What in the... Okay, I, I, I got to say that I'm, I am somewhat disappointed in Mr. Wish at this point. Maybe there's some weird standard in Massachusetts that he's pleading to, but you notice this other attorney didn't plead anything like that, so I, I don't know. I don't know. If you satisfy the actual malice standard, you don't have to go back to negligently. Uh, reckless disregard is a higher level of, of mens rea than negligently. So I'm not, I, that doesn't, that's a terrible sentence. It, it feels like it's being stated without any actual understanding of the New York Times versus Sullivan actual malice standard. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. That's a terrible sentence. Shame on you, Mr. Wish. Among other things, Mr. DeCastro never undertook any research to seek to determine whether his statements were true. He did not care whether statements were true because his purpose was to destroy Ms. Peter's reputation, not to seek to make accurate reports. Again, again, the actual malice standard that she needs to plead, again, it, it, again I'm nitpicking. This is going to be fine. But the actual malice standard is that he either said something knowing it was false or with reckless disregard to whether what he said was true or false. <sighs> Mr. DeCastro's false statements of and concerning Ms. Peter were defamatory per se. Mr. DeCastro's publication of false statements of and concerning Ms. Peter caused her damage. Wherefore, Kate Peter respectfully requests the court grant judgment in favor of Ms. Peter and award is Peter damages on account set forth above, uh, attorney's fees and costs, and such other relief. So doesn't state a uh, doesn't state an amount. Again, that's just my little best practices thing. Always state an amount in case he uh, ducks and runs and uh, defaults. But anyway, there you go. Uh, if you can't handle criticism of Kate and or attorney, well, I'm sorry. Uh, I call him like I see him. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.